the Sunday of the prodigal son follows on from the Sunday of the Pharisee and the tax collector because both parables contain a theme that is exactly the same. In the Pharisee and the tax collector, we see a Pharisee who presents to God a sense of himself full of pride. He's fasted, he's tithed, he's prayed, he's done outwardly everything he should do. While the tax collector beats his chest and is aware of his sin. And again, the prodigal son who has gone off wasted his father's fortune while the other son says, Father, look, all these years I've served you. I've never broken your commands. And yet in both stories, it's the tax collector who goes away justified and it is the son who has wasted, lived a riotous, sinful life who's welcomed back by the father and celebrated. So what is happening here? We are being told that God sees beyond the outward actions of our lives. God is concerned with the condition of our heart. The Pharisee, first of all, is full of pride. He justifies himself. The other brother, why has he served his father? Why has he remained faithful, kept his father's commands, worked so hard on the farm? There is resentment there. Does he work to expect a reward? He resents his brother. He resents the love between his father and his brother. These two parables are part of our preparation for Lent. They're a reminder to us that God seeks a heart that is humbled. God only accepts a heart that sees its own sin. Only when we truly repent like the prodigal son are we able to turn back to God. The prodigal son doesn't just repent with anxiety and regret, emotions. The prodigal son sees the condition he's living in. He gets up and he returns to his father. He does something. Our repentance mustn't just be wallowing in self-regret. We have to change. We have to actively try to change our lives. This is true repentance. The prodigal son lived a life of sin. The fathers say that line about him eating the husks that the pigs ate is a reminder to us that the husks symbolize the passions and the temptations that the demons present to us. And if we feed on them, we remain unsatisfied, unfulfilled. We remain hungry, spiritually hungry. And so long as we feast, we feed on these temptations, on sin, we live amongst the filth of the pigs. This is the life we choose. St. Nicholas of Serbia says to us, there are two poles in opposite directions. There is Satan and there is God. So long as we are choosing sin, we are facing Satan. We are moving to that, that faraway land that the prodigal son lived in, far away from God and his kingdom. We are moving towards Satan. Only when we repent, truly repent, do we turn around, metania, turn away from Satan, redirect ourselves to God. Repentance is the redirection of our life towards God. St. Nicholas of Serbia says to us, we must choose. We cannot travel in both directions simultaneously and every one of us is choosing to travel in one direction or the other. And when we do so, the story of the prodigal son reminds us that God doesn't just greet us and say, yes, I forgive you. The father rushes out. He watches for the son. And when the son approaches, he rushes, throws his arms around him, kisses him, and prepares a feast. He restores him to a higher condition than what he previously existed in. The angels rejoice over one sinner who repents. So these two stories are presented to us in our preparation for Lent. The Pharisee did what was good. He fasted, he tithed, things we will be called to do. But when we are called to fast this coming Lent, we must do so not believing that we are achieving anything, but that we are doing these things that our hearts may be changed. We fast so that we may change, soften our heart, 
The heart can be so rigid and hard, almost like stone, like a tomb. And what do we find in a tomb? The dead. Our hearts are dead, spiritually dead, so long as we build a whole, a stone cold wall around them. Fasting, tithing, good acts, prayer, reading of a, the gospels, the lives of saints and so on, they all act to soften our hearts. And the more our hearts are softened, the more we are able to see the light enters into us, we are able to recognize our sin. We are able to repent and we are able to re return and direct ourselves towards God. <laughs>